learn how to applique two different ways. <laughs> I've got my way and Kim's got hers. And if you have an embroidery machine, you're gonna love what I'm gonna show you today. And if you have a sewing machine, then you're gonna wanna follow along with me. It's an applique episode times two. I'm Kim. And I'm Chris. And you're watching The DIY Dish. Welcome to another episode of the DIY Dish. About six years ago, I started an online business where I was creating applique designs and sewing them onto t-shirts, mm -hmm. jeans, overalls, handbags, quilts, pillows. Just about everything you could get your hands <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, all kinds of things. You remember that? Oh yeah. <laughs> Needless to say, I love the art of applique. And you know, we often get asked questions about how to do it and if there's any special equipment needed or what kinds of tips we have. <laughs> now the cool thing is that if you have a sewing machine, even the simplest of machines, then you are going to be able to applique. And here's another great thing. If you have an embroidery <laughs> machine, which is my true love, then you're going to be amazed at how the press of a button and a few simple tips, you're also going to be able to applique. So we're going to share with you a free watermelon design for both the sewing machine as well as the embroidery machine. And we'll end with some tips of our own and some ideas for applique. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do the applique with a sewing machine, but if you're out there and thinking, well, I'll do the sewing machine version, but I don't care to watch the embroidery machine version, you might <laughs> want to rethink that because the embroidery is quite fascinating. I think so. It really is. So, it's, so it's be fun sure to just stay to around watch, for that. Right? It is, definitely. Okay, so with hmm. a sewing machine, folks. Okay, you're going to be able to download this paper pattern of the watermelon at the DIYdish.com. Okay, you can put it in all kinds of sizes. Yes. You know, if you want them for handbags, you want might want to make them bigger. Yep. If you want it for a little baby onesie, you might want to make it oh, smaller. So okay. Cute. <laughs> now, all you need to do is download that pattern mm -hmm. and then take a piece of uh, fusible web webbing. Uh, we like to use heat and bond light. Yep. And actually, you see here, there's like a shiny side to right. it, and there's the paper side. Put the shiny side down and the paper side is up and just trace over your watermelon pattern. Just like this. Now it's important to note that this watermelon is symmetrical, right? So it doesn't really matter if I'm tracing it the right way or uh, the reverse, of, reverse way. But if you had like a letter, like the letter B, yes, you, you would, would want to flip it. You would want to flip the pattern right. first. Okay, just want to make sure you know that. I, I'm sure you, you don't know that from experience. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> um, because when you turn it over onto your design, you want to make sure it's the right way. That's right. So, but again, because this is symmetrical, it really doesn't matter which mm -hmm, way mm -hmm. you are doing it. Now, I'm just going to trace real quick the rind here, as well as uh, the watermelon section. And I'm not going to worry about the seeds because for me, I want to do the seeds in black beads Cute. or black buttons. Cute. So yeah. that's another, you know, creative take you can do with this. Okay. okay. So I've traced it onto that paper and then I cut around the fabric. Well, actually, I guess I should say I've ironed, the pattern. It. I've ironed it onto the back side of the fabric. Mm -hmm. Got to make note of that. Ironed it onto the back side <laughs> of the fabric and then cut around it. Yes. Okay. All right. Got it? Mm -hmm. Got it. Got okay. it. Okay. Then I would take my scissors at that point and cut directly on the line. Okay. Then you have that nice glued edge all the way to the very edge of the watermelon. That's right. Okay. And that's when you would then take that paper and just peel it off. And you know you've done it right mm -hmm. if yep. you've got the shiny side that's on right. there. Okay. Right. That's the glue. Then you would take this to your handbag, your pillow, mm -hmm. whatever you're going to do this applique onto. Right. And according to the manufacturer's instruction on the fusible web, you will press it onto your project. So mm -hmm. here we go. I've pressed it onto the project just like so. Okay. Have the rind, have the watermelon. Yep. And now I'm ready to take it to my sewing machine and with a simple zigzag stitch. Very easy. That's all you need, a zigzag stitch. Now, if you want to cover the entire outside edge of it right. without any fabric showing along mm -hmm. that outside edge, then you're going to want to do a tighter satin stitch. Uh, but if you are fine with having a little bit of it fray, which is a really cute look. It is. Then a zigzag stitch or even a or straight it, stitch. Yeah, I was going to say a straight stitch yeah. would work just as well. Would be cute. I don't know if you can see here the zigzag along my finished project, but it's just inside uh, the outside perimeter of the watermelon rind. And then mm -hmm. I did the same thing for the 
fruit itself. Now, sometimes people ask, you know, do I go ahead and do I outline it in black or should I go to the same color? What's your preference, Kim? Well, good question. <laughs> um, you know, I've done it both ways. I've mm -hmm. done it where I want it to really pop and stand out. And if I want to do it that way, I'll do it in black. Yeah. But a lot of times I like to match the color of the fabric. Too. Yeah. And in this case, I did that. Yeah. So very all cute. I did from there was I took some rickrack trim. You got to love that. Oh, yeah. Put it around the mm -hmm. outside and then took two and a half inch strips of fabric, wow. added it to, to this. I'm going to add on some buttons, oh, just like so, so for the cute. seeds. I love I'm it. I'm going to stuff it into a pillow and take a look at what it oh, turned out like. Oh my goodness, that is adorable. There's the pillow. How easy was that? It's very, <laughs> very simple. Now, if you think that was simple, wait till you see the <laughs> embroidery machine version oh, of it. Oh my This goodness. is so fun. T check it out. You know, this really is fun. And it's, <laughs> you know, one of my favorite things to do on the embroidery machine is actually do applique. And why is that? It's because you can use so many cute fabrics. Yeah and fun designs that it doesn't just have to be left up to the thread only to make it look great. Yeah. So here we go. We have the Janome MC11000, which uh -huh. is your sewing machine and embroidery machine. And it switches over so easily. This little lever comes out in mm -hmm. order to make it into an embroidery oh, machine. Really? But then you flip it back in when you use it for sewing. Oh, so clever. isn't that great? Love it. And then all you have to do is change the feet. And this is how simple it is <laughs> to change the feet on here, Kim. Done. Nice. Okay, I like that. Okay, there we go. So it's ready now to go. Ready for embroidery. My, my design is loaded okay. into here, and it will take a USB mm -hmm. um, little port there so that you can uh, download for straight from the computer. Mm -hmm. And here I have my 4x4 four four hoop. What I've done here is I've used a, sti a sticky back stabilizer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've chosen that because I'm because actually it's going sticky. to. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to applique this. Same watermelon design onto the corner of my apron. Okay, so I stick okay. that on there into the hoop. There we go. And now I simply slide my hoop underneath the presser foot oops, and hook it into my machine and snap. Okay, just like that. Pretty simple. Yes. Okay. I get my screen ready here, make sure everything is out of the way. I don't want to have anything behind it. Okay, so I'm ready to go. So there's several steps with machine applique. First, you'll have the placement outline. That's going to show you exactly where to place your fabric. The second step is the tack down stitch, which holds your fabric in place. And finally, the third step is the satin stitch, and that's the final stitch of the fabric. Okay, if those three steps just went over your head, it's okay. <laughs> just watch because Keep, this is I fantastic. Know, it's, it's like magic. I love it. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. Okay, notice no hands. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not pressing any feet either. <laughs> this is a set it and forget it kind of project, right? Well, exactly. almost. <laughs> so right now what's happening is that I'm stitching out the outline of the rind. Of the rind. Yes. Okay. The machine automatically stops. Nice. Okay, I don't even have to <laughs> nice. worry about that I love because it. it's been digitized to stop right there. Okay. okay. All right, now, because I have this outline of the rind, I know exactly where to place my first piece of fabric for the rind. And so I've just chosen... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You <laughs> did not cut out the rind itself. No. That's now remember, square. that's right. No template necessary <laughs> to cut this out. All mm, you do is why you take... Is that, sister? <laughs> you take a piece of scrap fabric, and I'm going to use a little bit of temporary spray adhesive. Normally, okay. I would... Do this far away from anyone else, but you know, I'm not too worried. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then I make sure and smooth it out over okay. top of the placement outline, making sure that the entire outline is covered. Okay. And now I just push the button and let the machine do the work for me once again. Okay. And watching with ooh and ah. <laughs> watching with oohs and ahs. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so at this point, the machine is going to stop again. This lets me know that my tack down stitch has been finished. And now I'm actually going to remove the hoop from the machine, but not the design from the hoop. Keep everything in, nice and in place. And with a really good pair of applique scissors, OK, 
Okay, they do have these curved scissors, which makes it really nice for getting up close to the stitching without cutting through the stitching and being able to leave that edge nice and clean. So when you do this, make sure you're also doing it on a flat surface. Okay, and I'm going to just move it around like this. There. So see how easy that was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I simply removed the excess fabric, yeah. and now I place the hoop back into my machine again. Okay, and now you're ready for that third step, right? Not quite yet. Not Actually, yet. the way this one is digitized, I'm going oh. to do the placement and tap down stitch of the actual Fruit. watermelon. Ah, gotcha. And then I go back to do the satin stitch. Okay. okay. And there's no need to even change my thread colors at this point because those threads will be end up being covered, covered anyway, mm -hmm. so that's okay. So watch carefully, you'll see the watermelon now stitch out. Okay, so again, Perfect. that's the placement stitch. Yep, right? this is the placement outline. And now, my scrap piece of fabric. What a great this way. This is why we can never get rid of scrap fabric, I know, Chris. it's a sickness. Because <laughs> you might need it for an applique. Exactly. It's true. Well, it's that's true. what's so fun is you just need very, very small pieces. Yeah. Okay, and now the machine is gonna go exactly over top of that outline. Nice. Perfect. Okay, the machine stopped once again. Simply take the hoop from the machine, and again with my applique scissors, I will cut off the excess of the fabric around the fruit. Okay. Now, this can be such a fascinating process that sometimes <laughs> I just stare <laughs> in amazement as it stitches out. It's so yeah. fun. And my kids love coming around and watching it as well. Okay, this is my favorite part. What you're about to do. The Isn't satin the satin stitching? stitch? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and again, what the machine is about to do. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'd like to take the credit. That's However, right. <laughs> it's definitely my machine that's doing I the work it. for me. Love it. Okay. So, what it's going to do now is actually do the satin stitch of the green rind. So, okay. I'm going to keep with the green thread. thread on this one. When it's time to do the red part, I'll switch my thread colors mm -hmm. and make it red. Okay. Basically, right now, what's happening is it's stitching out um, the, the foundation of the satin stitch, okay? It's an, it's an underlay of sorts, okay? And it's a zigzag stitch. It's going to go back and around in the zigzag stitch, and then it will do the final satin nice stitching. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, if I wanted to, I could sit all day long and just watch it. However, I'm you sure if you're very busy, do, like the rest laundry, of us. Laundry, <laughs> food to make your children. Exactly. Dinner on the table. <laughs> so, yeah. But that's the great thing is I can kind of kill two birds with one stone. That's right. Oh, that is such a fun project. Now, take a look at all the possibilities that can be created with just one design. Handbags, tea towels, t-shirts, you name it. They all have their own unique look by the material you use and what you are placing it on. We can't wait to see what you do with the watermelon design. That's right. To close, we want to share a few quick tips for applique. First, if you want to sew a design onto something like a pair of jeans, simply take out one of the side seams with a seam ripper, lay the fabric flat so that it is now a single layer, and then add your applique. When you're done, you simply sew up the seam. Oh, that's perfect. Second, <laughs> if you'd like to applique onto fabric like knit, such as a t-shirt, then be sure to use a stabilizer underneath the fabric. Tear away, wash away, or even fusible stabilizers all work really well. Now, here's another tip, Kim, when it comes to t-shirts. Mm -hmm. I know oftentimes people get a little nervous about where to place the design exactly. Sure, you want it centered just right, up exactly. and down and sideways. Sure. And so you can do that by, you know, folding the shirt in half and finding the center point but if you want an even easier way, Designs and Machine Embroidery has come out with this wonderful kit called the Children's Perfect Placement Kit. Mm -hmm. And in there are all these templates, take a look at this, Kim, mm -hmm. where it will tell you exactly where to center your design. So for example, oh. let's say you want a design the center front. Here, I'm going to have you hold that okay. for a minute. And you're using a size 2T to 4T shirt like this, for sure. example. Okay. Go ahead and line up All right. the collar 
area, the neckline, right there, as close as you can as possible. And then, with a Target sticker that comes in this kit, you are able to find exactly where to place the, oh. your needle if you're doing it with the embroidery machine. That's fantastic. Isn't that great? Yeah. I mean, and it has so many different sizes that it even has one for the little mm -hmm. onesies, you know, the, the center newborn sure. kit. So anyway, that's just a little tip, a yeah. new discovery that I've made that I absolutely love when it comes to machine embroidery. Oh, thank you for sharing that. And third, if you are applicating onto a stretch fabric like knit, be sure to use a ballpoint needle. This is going to help prevent the needle from cutting too much into, uh, cutting holes into the fabric. Yeah, and that would go the same for machine embroidery as well, yeah. using that ballpoint needle. Yeah. So we want to thank today's sponsor, Janome, <laughs> for making the sewing and embroidery episode possible. So thank you for joining us today, and we hope that you felt creativity was served. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.